Hi, in this video I will demonstrate how to configure VTP on a core switch and distribution switch. It will be in a lab environment. Please remember to always make any changes, whatever you need to do on lab environment only, especially these tests. So in a minute we will get going. It's pretty simple. So please uh, read basic information which I'll show you in the, in the Cisco uh, packet tracer as well. Okay, here's our topology. We have uh, two switches, uh, which is uh, the 3560, the two top ones, uh, 3560, 3560, and we have ether channel right between them for redundancy act. I have another video which I will upload and I'll show you how to configure each channel later on. But uh, the basic and for this video is we have two um, core switches and we have distribution switches and we have the rest of the network. Whatever device we want to connect could be a Cisco phone, could be other switches, etc. Anyways, on this side of the switch, uh, I went on and I configure already the VTP the core switch if we go on and create a let's go and create a VLAN right there uh, go on, we're gonna create a VLAN on uh, on uh, on core 2 and uh, it should replicate to the other side and to the switch below as well so go on let's go and create a VLAN 800 let's say, let's say let's name it school let's just exit and uh, exit it's going to say show vlan it will show us what vlan we have there we go that is right now on core 2 as we see it right here so i just created a vlan on this um this switch and it is it is of course existing on this uh, on this uh layer 3 switch now let's go to the distribution switch and take a look did it really replicate or not okay let's go and take a look enable show vlan since this is already pre-configured the vlan 800 is right there we just created it on the core and it automatically replicated all the way or trunked to the the distribution switch so the whole idea is behind vtp to to have one point where we can um, we can just create a vlan in one area on one switch and it should replicate to the rest of the network if we take a look at the vtp status in here it's going to be client so let's go and we are, we are right now sitting on switch two so go on and let's type in show vtp status it should show it as a uh, client as we see it and of course we put a domain name right there as well okay so it is a client and whereas uh, if you go to the if you go to the um, core 2 we will see it as um, we will see it as um, as a uh, server so let's go to core 2 which is right at the top you're going, to, so you're going to say show VTP status and we're going to see it as server and we have a domain name as well for it. Whereas on this side, let's go to core one. Of course, it's going to show that it has been replicated, but it's not going to, it's not going to replicate to switch one. So bottom line, these two switches will the core one and core two will uh, replicate copy trunk all of the vlans but not to switch one we will let's take a look first thing first let's say show vlan and there we go we have the we have the vlan uh, school right there so it shows it's clearly when we created on uh, core two it automatically came all the way there so we are good right there Let's go and take a look at uh, switch one. This is switch one. Let's go and take a look. Okay. 
So VLAN. No, we don't see a VLAN 800. So uh, let's say show VTP status. As we see it, it is server, even though it's a distribution. So we're going to go on and change all of these. But first thing first, let's go on and uh, actually let's go on and configuration and change VTP, um, VTP mode. Let's make it client. Okay. Also, let's go on and uh, VTP domain. Let's give it a name. Okay, we give the name Wahid and let's exit. Let's write it. So let's go on and say VTP uh, status. Now this uh, this this access layer or distribution layer um, switch is now in client mode. As if we scroll up, it was in server. So that means when you're in server, you are the one who is managing the the VTP, the, the replication for the VLANs. In this case, now it is back to client. So now it's on client and uh, we can uh, we could just go on and um, and whatever configuration has been happening on the core level, they're going to replicate to the client. So you probably know already the analogy. How does it work? How client and server? If not, I'll make another video and describe it in details. Uh, okay, this um, this uh, access layer is now good to go. We just uh, change the VTP status to client, and we give it a domain name. And let's go to core, core one. We're gonna go to core one and. Let's go and configure it. Okay. VTP. Actually, on core one, we're going to go to interface FA01. The FA01 is coming to switch one. So we're going to go to config interface FA01. So interface. Interface FA01, and then uh, from there we're gonna go on and do some configuration. Let's go on and change the switch port mode. Trunk. Oops. Trunk. We're going to type in switch port trunk. We are sitting right on core 2. We're going to say allow VLAN. Let's go and allow everything for now. And then uh, let's go again to switch port. Mode. Trunk. Okay, okay. I see what's happening. We need to configure the encapsulation. So let's go on and say switch port, trunk, encapsulation, dot one, Q, enter. Now switch port, trunk. Uh, let's go in and also assign the native VLAN so we don't get native VLAN mismatch in here as well. If you want to know what v uh, native VLAN is, if you don't know it, I'd love to make another video, but pretty much that's a simple thing. Anyways, native VLAN, let's go and give it 999 because I remember I configured that one on that end as that. Okay, let's go on and uh, exit. Exit. Actually, config T. Let's go on and create a VLAN. Let's go and create VLAN 608 and call it, uh, name it Cisco. Let's exit. 
exit let's write it so we don't lose this configuration let's go to the um, switch one and see if that VLAN has uh, replicated or not okay the native VLAN mismatch happened but it's gonna be fine in a minute I'll configure it okay show VLAN Go back here to this guy. Okay, I forgot to add the trunk and native VLAN on the um, on the switch 2 as well let's, let's switch 1 let's go to config T interface FA01 that is right there between the core 1 and uh, switch 1 let's go on and say switch port mode trunk Getting all the errors, okay. Here we go. Switch port trunk allowed VLAN. Say all switch port. Trunk. Native VLAN. Let's give you that number nine nine nine, and that should be good. Should not get that um, the trouble with uh, for uh, native VLAN mismatch anyway anymore. So let's go and look in there. We are sitting on switch one, and now we see the Cisco uh, Cisco's. Um, VLAN and uh, so in this video we were able to configure the uh, native VLAN and also VTP on uh, switch uh, on core 1 and on port uh, FA01 and FA01 on the switch uh, 1 side as well so core 1, core uh, 1 and switch 1 were configured both for VTP and native VLAN and trunking and that is it let's go and one last look at switch 2 and those VLAN should be showing here as well the Cisco VLAN there we go same goes for switch um, 2 let's go and take a look enable show VLAN and the Cisco VLAN here is as well so one point of creation of VLAN as a server the top one in this video the top one the core ones are the servers and they're all on the same domain and they are replicating uh, to the distribution to the access layer anyways thank you for watching and uh, I hope you like this video informative